Hey, what's up? Welcome to The Creatives Conversation. My name is Gabriela Marte. I'm the owner of Helps2, the company that's putting this on, if you didn't know. And I have Amber with me. Amber Hoffman, everybody. I feel like we should have a siren. Right? That'd be so tight. Like a little trumpet sound? Yeah, or like a DJ sound. Yeah. You know, like in the club, I'm not doing it well, but like, and then like a bunch of applause, like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She's our brand manager here at Helps Too, and I think today's topic is fitting because you're tired, tired. and we're going to be talking about, well, answering the question, how do you not burn out? Mm -hmm. as a creative or just honestly as someone who's working all the time true yeah so where should we start you're feeling a little tired today (laughs) i don't know i dare not put words in your mouth but are you feeling burnt out today uh maybe a little yeah 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 just a little i've been uh i've been back and forth between two cities for the last three months now yeah so it's been a lot and i just kind of feel like, work is here, but other parts of my life are there, and so it's a lot. But yeah, um, I guess we could start with just talking about, like, what is burnout and what causes it. Yeah. I mean, that's good. I don't have, like, a de- definition. I don't have a definition from a dictionary. <laughs> Should we pull out a phone but, or something? Uh, I, can. I mean, if you want to go ahead and look it up. but Yeah, yeah what but, do you think burnout is like, while I Google this? Sure. Like, for me, burnout is basically when you've been pouring out so much that you haven't poured into yourself enough Mm -hmm. um and therefore you're emptied and you don't have anything else to give okay and so for me like burnout looks like you know if i go the whole week and just work and take care of other things and take care of things for other people and i don't spend any time for myself if i don't have like a quiet morning to myself or like you know, for me, it's like I always recharge in my hammock. That's like my favorite thing to do. Just go <laughs> string it up between two trees and lay outside for a little bit and like just be in a quiet, like peaceful space. Like that really helps me to prevent burnout. But if I don't have those things, you to know, recharge. to recharge, yeah. however that looks like, you know, everyone's different too. So you might recharge out in public with a bunch of people. Yeah. Like extroverts love sure. to be around. Yeah, for sure. And so recharging and just keeping yourself filled up and doing, you know, those self care things that, you know, just help you to feel okay and yeah. alive. <laughs> no, that's good. I think that's a great definition. I will say right here in the dictionary, I don't know where this is from, but it just <laughs> came up in Google search, said the reduction of... Well, that's not what I want to read. Uh, <laughs> physical or mental collapse caused by overwork or stress. Um, yeah, I think that's the only one that has to do with humans. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure yeah. there's other like technical definitions, but yeah. that one's physical pretty good. Physical or mental collapse mm. caused by overwork or stress. Yeah. Makes and I sense. think to be on- if we're going to be 100, I think a lot of us um creatives, creativity is not the only thing we do every day. Right. It's very rare that you meet someone when that that's all they do. For like, sure a songwriter or a painter or something that's all they do and so even people who are doing that they have to handle like everyday things like for sure that take a lot of time like taxes yeah taxes (laughs) family Uh uh-huh you know being a creative and making a living it is very rare to see that actual actually happen without like doing other things like for sure having other streams of income or definitely yeah having someone build with you Mm -hmm. so there's a lot that goes into that like especially if you're going to be running some kind of a business. Mm -hmm. And so I know I have reached burnout before. I feel like, to be honest, God has been really gracious with me. So I haven't like ever like gone too far to where I couldn't recover. Yeah. But I will say in seasons past, which is crazy because I'm in one of the most busy seasons of my life, Mm. doing so many different things, lots of irons in the fire, (laughs) lots of hands in the pot, Lots of, I'm just kidding. <laughs> keep going. Just I was like, going. are there more? <laughs> Lots of fish in the sea. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> Lots of shrimp in the skillet. Come on, somebody. Oh, wait. <laughs> Come on, shrimp. Manifest. So that's a side story. That's so a whole other story. I was cooking shrimp for Amber one day, and I was just getting frustrated because it was taking so long. And I was like, Come and on, shrimp. And it was shrimp. like popping up and burning your hand to the oil. <laughs> I was like, Manifest. She I goes, Come on, shrimp. Manifest. I have never heard those words put together in my life. I don't think I've life. ever heard it either. I, I just don't know where she comes. Like, you just say things. And I'm like, well, it came from an that? earnest place of frustration. Sure. Okay. <laughs> but what? why were they manifesting? I don't know. That's what happens. It was funny. Funny. but anyways you hang around weird interesting people yeah that's probably um, it yeah but anyways so 
Yeah, I'm in one of the busiest seasons of my life. And I knew that this season was coming. Mm-hmm. And I also knew mentally that, like, the season I came from was very lax mm. and um, gave a lot of time to, like, do whatever I kind of wanted. Like, I could kind of wake up when I want it, kind of work when I want it. Right. I could kind of just do whatever. And to be honest, I actually look back and I'm kind of, like, sad that I didn't utilize my time better. Sure. In the sense of... Um, I wasn't disciplined at all. Mm -hmm. And so now I'm busier. And I knew when I made the transition that a part of me would have to get it together in order to not burn out. Mm -hmm. Like I knew right away. And so um, for me, I would say the number one way I am avoiding burnout, and this is something Marie Forleo, another entrepreneur, said. She said that she every night – sits down with, like, her calendar and Mm -hmm. plans out the next day. Yeah. And I don't know if this is her either, but I usually try to. I don't always do this, but uh, put down three things that... To accomplish. I want to accomplish before the end of the day. I've heard that before. I don't think I always actually do that, but the calendar thing has helped me tremendously. Yeah, that's brilliant. Just having your next day already planned out mentally so that when you wake up, you're not just like, holy crap, what am I supposed to be doing? Yeah, you're not flailing. You're not freaking out. You're just ready to go. Yeah, and within that schedule, I personally Mm -hmm. plan like different times of rest exercise is really mm-hmm. important to me and um yeah <laughs> you just gotta watch like when you are more and more busy i feel like you have to kind of pay attention to scheduling those things yeah otherwise you'll just end up not doing them for sure but exercise is good for my mental health i yeah, think people no, just same. see me and they're like oh you're such an athlete that's great or whatever like oh you're always at the gym no because i'm not an athlete it. listen my mental health. like i don't have an athletic bone in my body there's no part of me that's like yes i love working out but like i have kind of resisted for a long time people saying like oh working out even if it's simple will like make you feel better like yeah. y'all i don't care how much you hate working out just try it just try being consistent with it because it's changed everything for me like my mood is much more stabilized Mm -hmm. like i feel like i just have more serotonin more you know good endorphins going on just more energy more energy that's Mm -hmm. a huge one yeah for sure and so and i just feel better about myself and just getting like getting other things done is easier because i feel like you know i just get that out of my way in the day and then i'm just like already focused and ready to go yeah so. and it allows me to eat whatever i want which i know that is not going to be the case for everyone but <laughs> yeah. like yeah i'm really grateful because when i don't exercise mm-hmm. i can feel a pizza or i can feel it like you know when you yeah. have that extra it's weighing you down oof. yeah 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 i mean but i'm also training for a triathlon right now so like the reality of my exercise versus like what's normal Normal, for a human is probably like really different but (laughs) yeah definitely but i will also say it wasn't that crazy like this morning i got up i did a cycling class and then i swam 500 meters in the pool and i was done that's not normal (laughs) i you know i don't think you would be surprised how normal that is oh yeah i believe it Uh, oh i believe it yeah i see people at the gym all the time who are like parents like people in their 40s 50s even like going hard like on the treadmill longer than i spend my whole like my whole workout and i'm just like wow like just running the whole time yeah so people yeah there's so many people out there it's just that's not me (laughs) no i'm telling you there's a certain like euphoria and mental headspace that you can't really get into until you like push those limits Mm -hmm. yeah it's the weirdest thing no that's true yeah yeah yeah. Which is, I love that headspace. I just hit it the other day. Oh, like, good. I did, like, a, yeah. a brick run, which is, like, when you, um, sorry, we're, like, getting into, like, athletics here, but <laughs> where you ride your bike, and then you get off, you start running, a little psychotic to some, but, like, I, you know, I'm getting into it, and so, yeah, I did my little six miles on the bike, and then ran, like, a mile, and that's not even, like, a lot when it comes to triathlon distances, but right. it was just enough to get my heart racing, And I just felt great for the rest of the day. Yeah, that's so good. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, exercise for sure, I think. It looks different for everyone. Right. Is one way, though, to prevent burnout, even though it's, like, not necessarily, like, you know, something that everyone loves or something, something that everyone's excited about. Like, I started... Last year, I started going on long walks Mm. and just walking my dogs every night for like, I'm not even kidding, like at least an hour just going on long walks. And like, it was like a form of cardio that wasn't too intense, but I was just out doing something, moving my body and like just getting outside. And it was a good time to process. It's a good time to like look out at nature and all that stuff. And so exercise doesn't have to be like 
training for a triathlon or like going to the gym and lifting weights although those things are good you know no it doesn't um have to like be that way. i go to yoga that's like my primary form of exercise i'm there yeah. like three times a week maybe in a yoga Some class people swim like yeah i've been i so i've been taking swim lessons <laughs> for this triathlon thing back to that but um my teacher he goes swimming is like a lazy sport he was like you're swimming too hard swimming is a lazy sport like you should hmm. be able to do this till you're 90 and i'm telling you the truth like the more i swim in the pool <laughs> olympic Olympic or non-Olympic pool, I just see, like, the older people are crushing this sport. Yeah. Like, I always see old people taking up all the lanes at the pool. I'm like, dang, I'm trying to swim, too. (laughs) Let me in. (laughs) Like, yeah, these (laughs) 70-year-olds in there. I'm like, oh, my gosh. I'm trying to be that fit. it's smart because Mm -hmm. it keeps you fit. It's Mm -hmm. good cardio. Mm -hmm. And, like, it's, like, there's no gravity on your body when you're doing it. It's so so true. It's good, easy on your joints. Yeah, it's amazing. It's mm -hmm. amazing. So just some ideas, whatever it looks like for you. (laughs) I think exercise is great. One thing you mentioned earlier, though, was processing. Mm -hmm. And that's something that we don't really talk about. I think processing your life, I know I get in a frazzle and I end up spiraling out of control mentally when I'm in a season of busyness or maybe it's not even a season, but just I Mm -hmm. feel like I haven't had a moment because I haven't processed. And I think that's so important to like have a moment where you process and I love to meditate. Like I meditate on like the Bible, of course, right? Yeah, for sure. And so um, some people meditate on other things, but that really lifts me up because I feel like the Bible is powerful like that. But, mm-hmm. um, I think just having these moments where you can look at your life. And I had a friend in college say the problem with our generation, which she was talking to millennials and she is one is that we don't reflect. And so, and I started thinking, you know what? We don't. And so I would go home at night and just take 20 minutes and, right. and reflect. Yeah. Like, how was today? Uh-huh. What didn't I like? Oh, what I had this trauma better? moment with this person, yeah. right? That like I encountered and they cussed me out or whatever. <laughs> like, what did I not like about that? Or like, mm-hmm. I was even processing today and, and reflecting. I was like, man, I kind of can't wait till August is over because it's August right now. And I was like, well, why? And I was like, man, I just feel like I'm so nervous about all these different events. Like, mm. I just can't wait till September. There's nothing happening. Yeah. Except my I, birthday. Yeah. And Andre's sure. birthday. Hey. <laughs> Our videographer. I feel like, well, there's no pressure celebrating your birthday. Sure. But like my birthday, I feel like that, like I, that suspense of like, what's it going to be like? Sure. Yeah. Or our book release is that. coming in a week. Right. Like, hey. <laughs> who's going to really come and what's it going to be like? Right. Just like all the internal dialogue Not that knowing. we don't always talk. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, and I'm doing a triathlon, like. Right. Am I going to make it? I'm just kidding. <laughs> You're going to make I it. Will I survive? Will I live? I'm oh, just my kidding. gosh. Yeah. No, I will. But, yeah, I think, yeah, processing that and saying to yourself, okay, so what you're dealing with is fear and nervousness. Mm-hmm. Let's speak to ourselves and even pray about it and like get yeah. to a different place. And so I was like, no, we're going to enjoy these moments because they're monumental and super memorable. So mm-hmm. like we're just going to enjoy them. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's so good. And I think like – Everyone processes differently. So, totally. like, finding what works for you is extremely helpful. Like, I've kind of learned that, like, with emotional things, I'm more of an internal processor. But with, like, just external things that are related to, like, other people or whatever, I'm much more of an external processor. Mm. So, I need to, like, talk to somebody. Like, I need to kind of hear a second opinion. Like, hey, am I crazy that when this person said this to me, it bothered me? Or, like, you know, something yeah. like that. But when it comes to me and my own emotions, like, I need to sit down and kind of, like, brain dump um yeah. which i really try to do at least 15 minutes a day and dr caroline leaf i don't know if you've heard of her yeah but that's actually who i got it from yeah, yeah she's um she's really well known for you know psycho she's a neurologist yeah i, yeah, I think so. so i'm not she exactly sure i'm sorry but yeah, yeah she she's an expert in the brain and uh she says you know you should brain dump for at least 14 minutes a day minimum like yeah. you should absolutely not let a single day get away without doing that which is just like letting your brain go mm-hmm. like it's not even like a streamline of thoughts that have to go a certain way like you don't have to think about x y and z it's just like letting your brain go and think yeah. whatever you want to think think about everything that's on your mind let it all out and like do don't that for at least two mm-hmm. it can be surprising for sure And so, and I find like at the end of yoga during Shavasana or like, you know, Mm -hmm. the final relaxation pose where you're just laying on the ground and it's quiet. Like I find that I start brain dumping and I'm just like, oh my gosh, how did I get here? Like I'm thinking about all these things that, you know, I I didn't expect when I first closed my eyes and it's just really good. It's really helpful. Yeah. And I think it's great. Also, you know, for internal processors, like one way to get all those internal thoughts out of you is journaling. 
Mm. Um, just like having something to tangibly put it on is super helpful. Like just yeah. knowing like, okay, I can kind of feel all this and I can kind of, you know, order it all in my mind a little, but like actually getting it out and onto paper well, you'll be surprised, like, just how much you start writing and how much comes out of it. Yeah. Like, every time I journal, I'm just like, oh, my gosh, I had no idea I was carrying all that. That's that I was so good. feeling all these things, you know? Huh. I'm having a revelation while yeah. you say I don't <laughs> like to journal. Really? I used to when I was younger. I don't mm. really like it. But I'd rather sit at a keyboard and go crazy. Yeah. Like, and well, that, sing out that's all my a, feelings. Like, yeah. And I can do that, but I just realized, man, I don't really like to sit down. Like, mm. I'm like the kid that's like, let's run, let's go, yeah. let's go. I'm still like that. And so... But yeah, I think journaling is great. Yeah, and I think... You can sing it out too if you want to. I Yeah, for sure. There's so many ways to process. I think journaling doesn't have to be done in your bedroom with the door closed. Yeah, like, fair. I almost never journal in my room That's at how home. I think of it. I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna be all alone and, in my room. Yeah, exactly. And that horrible. just feels so, like, stuck. Like, for some people, that's great. That's what they want. But for me, I'm just like, I don't feel like mentally like I don't feel like a good flow state comes in while I'm mm. sitting in my room with the door closed yeah and so if I go like out to a park and I take my journal with me you know suddenly I'm writing pages and pages and I just don't want to stop or you oh, know that's good. I go to a coffee shop or something like that you know it doesn't have to be in your bedroom with the door closed you oh, know that's so good that's a good reminder yeah you know I love that I feel like one thing about burnout is that like you have to process for sure. Mm -hmm. But I think there's some a real practical thing that you have to consider like what is it that like is draining you? Yeah. And is it like your attitude and approach towards that thing? Or is it just the thing? Like, no, that's real. Because I think that's actually a conversation I had with someone the other day. Because I was tired and they called me out about it. And no. I was like, you know, I don't actually think it's all the things. I just think... I personally have not taken time for myself, and but I have the ability right. to do that. Right. And so it's just my approach to all the things. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not great, <laughs> you know, so yeah. in different moments. And so, yeah, I think – and then sometimes our attitudes just need to be changed about certain things. Yeah. Like, I know one creative struggle is like, oh, well, I have this job and I really want to do this, so life right. sucks. Like. Well, or you could see it as a stepping stone. Yeah, it's an opportunity for you to learn and grow. I had to go be a pre-K teacher before I came and worked sure. for Helps too, and that was rough, y'all. Listen, four and five year olds need Jesus. That's all I'm gonna say. Yeah, like, they're wild. They're wild. <laughs> I was watching a two year old, I was like, ah. Yeah, you're no. Psychotic. And like so, <laughs> you know, I my goal, and I knew all along, was to come and work full time for Helps too, but I had to, you know, go through some opportunities to get there, some other opportunities. I say that rather than like other trials because it was a trial, but yeah. <laughs> I saw it as an opportunity. I the got to learn it, right? how to teach and I got to learn how to handle 15 kids at once, which is wild, but you know, <laughs> maybe you'll have I'm stronger kids for it. Hope, no, <laughs> no, that's preparing you. No, <laughs> I'm gonna go with no, that's a hard no for me. <laughs> Everybody. Comment below, if, especially if you're on YouTube. Do you think she should have 15 kids? No. The answer is no. No. <laughs> we're, we're letting that one go. Anyways. And so, like, you know, I, I even when I when the time came for me to leave that job and come over to Kansas City and work here, like, I talked to, you know, I said to my boss there, like, even though it was a really tough job, I, I told her, like, I thanked her for the opportunity and I told mm. her that I was able to grow a lot and that I was appreciative. Yeah. And just, like, having that attitude really helped switch Makes things. Makes a difference. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So seeing it and, like, I realized that, I think a lot of people look at a lot of things in life with dread. Like, I yeah. remember you talking about dreading going to the gym before you started training for your triathlon. Yeah, it's scary. Yeah, and just, like, some people dread waking up every morning and going to work and that yeah. type of thing. Yeah. And so I think it's so important with your attitude adjustment to start to see the good that's going to come out of it. Like, mm -hmm. I used to dread going to the gym, too, and I started to realize, like, every time I leave the gym, I feel better. Like, every time I get there, yeah. it's hard, but every time I leave, I feel better. And if you can take that, like, dread and reassociate it with, like, mm -hmm. why well, I don't really dread it, I fear it, mm -hmm. but I'm fearing something that's so positive for my right, life. Right, right. Like, so I'm going to actually push forth and do it yeah. anyway. Yeah, that's great. I mean, yeah, that's why I used to dread the gym. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It's just hard, and it's, like, it feels so hard some days, but yeah. the reality is it's it's not that hard. It's not. And it it's like what a, an hour maybe out of your day mm -hmm. that you and have to do a hard early. thing. Yeah. yeah, it is really not that hard. I was I was cycling today and I was like, yeah, I'm barely sweating. <laughs> so like, 
it was like an easy thing to do for me. You and know it what I feels mean? so good too. Cause I think exercise is just a really good example. Cause you, you get tangible, like obvious results. Like it's such a good feeling too, that you feel mm-hmm. like I'm getting better at this. Yeah. Like, absolutely. like I keep doing it in spite of like not wanting to show up. I keep showing up and like, it's easier now for me to do this thing. I can do yeah. it without as much effort and I can even like, like lift heavier weights or like do even harder yoga poses or whatever it is, you know, yeah. go on longer runs. Yeah. So yeah. I, I just don't want to live a life. And I, I just say this to everyone who's listening, who just wants to live such a simple, well, I want to live a simple life, but like doesn't ever want to get out of your shell or do mm-hmm. anything that's beyond your comfort zone. Like that just is so boring. Like, yeah. <laughs> and I'm sorry if you hate wow. me for saying that. But like, the reality is, y'all. is like, well, I'm my, my old former self. Yeah. And the self that I have to challenge daily. I'm looking at myself in the mirror saying this right now, to be honest. I'm yeah. Like, because it, right here. Yeah, I know. Hi. <laughs> There's a mirror behind me. <laughs> Hello. But um, <laughs> the reality is, is it's human nature to want to be comfortable. Like, yeah. But the reality is, again, that we're not made to be stagnant. We're made to grow, ebb and flow, to thrive, to strive to a certain degree. She's writing a song, Um, (laughs) y'all. Do you hear all that rhyming? Ready to ebb and flow and strive and thrive. (laughs) Anyways, but I just want to encourage some of you out there, especially, and I'm taking this to the bank too, our videographer dancing. It's just like... (laughs) I know it should be a that's song. a new jam listen she said ebb and flow and learn and grow I'm like okay and thrive anyways try with the beehives oh my God. beehives sorry, I don't sing like that with a beehive what are you doing anyways, sorry. <laughs> that's a good you're gonna like scare people away from going over to your music channel they're gonna be like Marte she's I think a musician I can act a total clown because like I'm decent, you know what I mean? Because she knows she's good. <laughs> I've done this That's for a real. long time, okay? It's not my first time in the rodeo. That's so. real. That's real. Um, anyways, but I just want to encourage us all, all of us creatives, if we were all to sit in this room right now, which would be really hard to do, but I want to just say... <laughs> this little bitty room. Please challenge yourself yeah. to get out of your box and to do not all hard things, but to do hard things that challenge you Yeah. and knock at your door because it will change your life. Yeah. And make you a better person. That's why I did a triathlon or yeah. decided to do one. I knew that I was in a slump mm. and I know that working out makes me feel better, makes me more creative, gives me endorphins, makes me more um, positive in terms of contributing to society. <laughs> sure. Yes, my views are really different. Like, I get really depressed when I don't exercise. Yeah, no, it's that's the craziest real. thing. So, yeah. I have to really stay on it. And so, I knew that if I did something that kind of put a little fear in me, like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. maybe turn to God and be like, I need help. Right. And pushed me, that it would, like, change everything for me mm. and kind of, like, spark me back to life. So that's why I did it. It's yeah. not easy, though. But, well. like, and I've had even breakdown moments. You know, I told my friend, I said, I don't know if I can sign up for this. And she said, you're signing up because I already signed up. It was like $100. <laughs> How dare you? And I How was like... You? Well, honestly, I'd, I went through a whole spiral mentally. And that's when I learned my mind, sorry, microphone, is not as trained as I thought it was. Mm. And I, that's another thing I want to bring up. Do hard things, but like, don't neglect your mind and mm. your soul. You mm-hmm. have to train those things. Oh, yeah. Especially your mind. And I realized my mind was not trained because I was freaking out at the thought, which I'm sure a lot of people would. It's actually quite common of swimming in open water four or 500 meters and not being able to hold on to anything. Right. And it's... so, which is actually not how it is. They have people on kayaks with like buoys and stuff. So if you're desperate, like you could be like, Hey lifeguard, can I hold on to your boat? And they will like let you hold on. Then right. Like, no. So, and a lot <laughs> of people actually there. do yeah. it. Yeah. And that's yeah. why they're there. And so I knew that, but I was still spiraling. I was like, I have to go to the lake. I have to make sure I can touch the bottom at some point. Or I'm going to like freak out. Mm. And my friend was like, what is the deal? She was like, you're freaking out. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, I don't know. I was like, I have some kind of trauma or something. And she was like, you're going to be okay. And I was like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. You know how you're freaking out. Yeah. Like, I'll talk to you later. I'm going to go freak out <laughs> on my own. Cause right. you're helping. Right. And I really had to go like shake myself to light and be like, Gabby, what is the deal? Why can't you do this hard thing? Mm-hmm. My mind was untrained. Oh, wow. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I've been watching um, Osaka. I forget what her first name, her first name is. Um, but she's the famous tennis star. Oh, okay. Uh, what is her first name? I don't know. Um, I'll <laughs> Google it. Cause okay. I, we're watching that documentary on Netflix about mm-hmm. Osaka. Um, she's young. I think she's, like, not even 25 yet. Yeah, let's see. 
I just Googled Osaka sushi, and that's not what I was trying to do, guys. Oops. That's what I was thinking when you said Osaka. I was like, hmm, sushi. Sounds good. I think it's Naomi. Yep. So she's, like, famous. Like, mm. she beat uh, Serena at tennis. Yeah. Just so. nodding like I know what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Serena Williams. Mm-hmm. The tennis star. Are you for real? Andre, do you know who I'm talking about? He's from Brazil. He knows Serena. I don't know anything about sports. I'm so sorry. She's, I really wasn't she's kidding. She's an icon. She's not just a tennis star. She's an icon. I mean, you could name almost any famous person, and I wouldn't know who Kobe they are. Kobe Bryant. Okay, I know who that is. Michael Jordan. Okay, but come on. LeBron James. Yeah, but okay, these are all basketball people. Patrick Mahomes. Okay, but I live in Kansas City. Shaquille O'Neal. Shaquille O'Neal. That's a singer, right? No, you're kidding. I don't oh know. I think we need to take a break. <laughs> no, I'm so we'll take serious. take a five-minute break. I, I seriously, this off. oh my gosh, I really don't know. I'm sorry. Venus and Serena Williams are like world-renowned for tennis playing. Like, That's great. Yeah, so anyways. I'm sure they're very happy. Naomi Osaka beat Serena at the age of like 23 or something like that. It's a big deal. Okay. So wow. young. Yeah. Incredibly gifted. And she was talking about in her documentary how, or I think someone else said this about her, she is so mentally strong. Mm. Oh, yeah. And I yeah. think about it, I was like, girl, I know I'm out here trying to do my little mini size sprint triathlon. <laughs> and like, this girl is like, boom, boom, boom. Having to get up in front of crowds of like, God knows how much. Right. Like 30,000 or whatever and play these tennis matches and like not let people get to her. Mm-hmm. And so I'm like, man, like. How different would the world be if we trained our minds? Took care of yeah. our souls, mm-hmm. took the rest, did whatever we needed did to do. Did our processing. Did our processing. Brain dumping. Yeah. Prayed, all of that. Did the exercise. Uh-huh. And trained our minds. Would we even hear the word burnout anymore? I don't even think so. I really <laughs> would it don't. even be a concept? Because you would take moments to pause during the day. It wouldn't be go, 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 right. or frantic, frantic, right. frantic, if that's, yeah, that's yeah, how sure. it's pronounced, frantic. Yeah, and but, my um, yeah. my mentor recently told me, and I kind of mentioned this in our podcast that we had with Amber Wilson, but um, she told me, like, uh, that you have to take pauses throughout your day. She was you basically do. like, you need to, it doesn't matter, like, you have to. She's like, you need to find time. 10 minutes, just like, don't look at a screen. Don't do anything. Just pause and like reflect. Yep. Think, like pray. Don't just like make yourself keep going, 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 going. Cause she's like, that's how people burn out. Yeah. And she also talks about like how solitude is where creativity comes from. And Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people are afraid to be alone and especially extroverts, they're afraid to be alone in a room with themselves or, you know, something like that. Not me. Y'all yeah. can put me well. in a room. Give me a bunch of pillows and I a don't... nice fluffy blanket. I'll be right there. Whew. Hallelujah. <laughs> well, <laughs> you are. You don't yeah. feel the same? No. Yeah. <laughs> and like, then if you want to take me and put me like near a beach too, some palm trees. Yeah. Suspended See, if I'm alone, ocean. but like out somewhere, I'm like, yeah, that, I'm into that. But like alone in a house, I'm just like, I feel trapped. <laughs> I'm like, I'm yeah unleashed no i i love being alone but in public you know like really? alone but like in a hammock or like alone i love being but... alone at home i turn on my music mm-hmm. my dad's old funk and i'll put something on like i think it's the gap band and i'll be like let's groove tonight uh, nah, uh, nah. And i start dancing wild you're just dun, wild dun, 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 dun. <laughs> i get on the fireplace share the spice of life dun, 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 dun. nothing i have nothing to say dun, dun, dun. Are you, you're done? Are you, no, she's not done, y'all. Okay. Anyways. Okay. I just want to say, go. you know, there's just such a beauty. I think I was the firstborn. It's yeah. me. I just, I could kick it by myself. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I'm not the firstborn. So I'm just like, where's everyone? I want to hang out. <laughs> Where are the people at? <laughs> but anyways. And I'm like, run so, from these people. I know, I'm right? Like, where are the people? I feel like the Little Mermaid, that song where she's like, I just want to be where the people are. Sing it. I don't know it. I what? just know that's the lyrics. You have no clout right now. You know nothing about sports. You don't know The Little Mermaid. I forgot the song. Sing it real quick. I forgot it. You know the name of it. I forgot it. That's a lie. Your whole face is a lie. <laughs> I've seen The Little Mermaid. You a lie. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Uh, how many times song? must I fight Gabby I on this podcast? Be where the people are. See, okay, now that I hear it, I remember it. Then sing the rest of it. I don't I remember the, the rest of it. Da, Gabby. Da, da. 
wanna see them You know what? Dancing. I can sing a lot of songs, but I can't sing that out one. Out where they run. Is that how it goes? Yeah, something like that. That out does sound where right. they drive? No. They I don't know. Stay Anyways. Stay awake day and night. Yeah, yes. Under the sea. Anyways. I'm Anyways. <laughs> you sure I'm are. I'm sorry. If y'all hate this, that's fine. <sighs> well, you I hate it because I'm getting grilled out here, but it's fine. That's not me grilling you. It's absolutely you grilling it's me. It's your lack of iconic knowledge. I'm so it's sorry. Listen, I've got my brain filled with plenty of other stuff. Like dogs. Mostly dogs. Oh my gosh. But anyways, so. I'm sure yeah. Serena Williams has a dog. That's cool. <laughs> maybe, maybe I'll learn more about her dog. If her dog has an Instagram account, maybe I'll follow it. But anyways. Probably not. But so, so yeah. So like getting alone and cr- like just spending time alone is where you create from. Like that's yeah. where that's birthed and all that. And so if you're not spending enough time alone, you very likely will face burnout because, you know, mm-hmm. you're not giving yourself time to let that creative energy flow freely. Recoup. Yeah. Because especially like people who you know, kind of care about what people think and like care about image. They're going to create when they're around other people based on what they think other people want to see. You know, and I had a thought about that today. I said to myself, I want to go rework my own marketing plan for my music project Mm -hmm. because I think for so long I was like, well, there's such a demand to put out content that we would put out content like every day on Instagram, right. every week on YouTube. Mm-hmm. And I, I mean, it was great. It was so much fun. Yeah. But I'm just not feeling that anymore. That's, I'm hey, over yeah. it. Like, you got to so do you. It. And yeah. that's why you got to spend time in solitude to realize like what is going to work for you. You yeah, know, figure it like, out. Like when I create alone versus when I create in public, like if I'm sitting around a bunch of people and I'm drawing something, like there's a pressure to make it good. You know, there's a pressure yeah. to like make it look like I know what I'm doing. Or whatever. When I create alone, the best stuff comes out of it. Because I'm just yeah, not even thinking about it. I'm just truth. going, you know? Yeah. And so creativity really does, co- like, stem from solitude. And just having that time to yourself alone and just And it doesn't have to be in a room, Yeah, per se, exactly. Again. I mean, I get things when I'm running. Yeah. Like, down a path at yeah. the park. Like, For me, it's when I'm driving. I'm driving and I just start processing and I'm like, oh my gosh, I got to make this. Like, yeah, this yeah. is a great idea. Or, yeah. you know, start writing something in my mind. So, yeah, yeah. No, that's so good. That's so good. So if somebody's watching right now and they're like, yo, I can resonate with the fact that like burnout is real. I feel like I'm on the verge or I'm already there. Mm-hmm. Like what kind of advice should we give them? Like, what would you say? Um, I would say like, first of all, get around some people, get around some community mm-hmm. and ask them to like speak into you and encourage you. Yeah. I was expecting that. Well, I wasn't either, but I just thought about it. I was like, hmm, if I'm really feeling low and I'm feeling burnt out, like the last thing I need to do is go isolate. I just talked about solitude, but that's different than isolation. Yeah. And yeah, so, that's true. And so like if I'm feeling low and I'm feeling burnt out and like everything's draining my energy, like I need to hear some encouragement from my people, you know? I need to mm. go talk to Gabby or go talk to my boyfriend or go talk to my mom or somebody that I trust um and get just a little like word of love and encouragement and to hear like hey you're doing good like even if you feel tired even if you feel awful and like like nothing's getting done and it's Are just you words piling of up on you i'm really not really? but i think like just the love languages yeah <laughs> here we are but i'm really not words of affirmation but i think just hearing that is really reassuring yeah that's true and so yeah if i feel like i'm screwing up i guess yeah maybe i do need to hear that my definitely. mom is great at that yeah like, actually everybody told me except for my mom that i shouldn't do a triathlon sorry i'm stuck on this triathlon y'all you're gonna I have to kick me out wait you're i i didn't tell you not to do a triathlon you said I was busy. You didn't say not to do it. You said, you're kind of busy. I don't know if it's the best idea. I might have said that. That's tell, just tell a me realist in me. Your whole face is a lie. I don't remember what I said, <laughs> I but I probably... I, think, I don't think everybody said no, but I think most people were on the no, like, pushing that way. Nobody yeah. said, hey, don't do it. But, like... Sure, sure. Everybody's like, yeah, I don't know if it's, like, the best for this season right, of your life. Right. They weren't like, you can't do it. Mm-hmm. But my mom was like, listen, these people don't know you. Like, I know you. <laughs> and she was like, you do best... When you are thriving under pressure. See? Do it. That's why you need that. You need that community, those people to speak something into you like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I was like, okay. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> She's right, though. It yeah. was perfect. Yeah. I think my advice for someone who's burning out, and I think this might have to do with, like, how I'm wired. When I'm usually burnt out, it's because I'm tired. Like, physically tired. Yeah. And so I, a good day of rest and, like, sleeping. Yeah. Take a Sabbath. Like, take me from a zero to 100 right. like 100 
100, 100. <laughs> okay. And so, um, <laughs> sorry, I'm just feeling up. I don't know obviously. what's happening today. It takes me from zero to, like Sierra says, Sierra Bruton, who was on here, a whole buck. You know what I mean? I feel like I have been renewed. I don't think people say zero to a whole buck. She says a whole buck. Yeah, but I don't think, anyways, I'm going to let it go. Fight me. Anyways, <laughs> back to what I was saying, zero to a whole buck. Nobody says that. Thank you. <laughs> and um, it honestly, it makes me feel like 100%. That's what I'm trying to say. But I think that and um, just really, like, if it really is a long-term burnout, though, I think just really reassessing. Yeah. Like, what life looks like. And yeah. And you need to change it. And, you know, sometimes it's okay to quit. Yeah. I think people are out here yes. like, you must never turn Hallelujah. in your two weeks. You must persevere. We're going to have a revival in out. here tonight, y'all. Like, make it work no matter what. Listen, I was a pre-K teacher. One day, I just went in and said, I quit. Like... <laughs> I ain't messing with y'all's kids no that, more. I'm well, done. Well, I tried to work with them. I told them, hey, I need part-time because I'm working more. I was basically at that point working 55-hour work weeks w- between my pre-K job and my help to job. And I was like, I need less hours here. And I've told you guys for two months now, you've promised me Not and you haven't come me. through. So you know what? I quit. And I put in my two weeks. And I don't feel bad about it because but that's you know what, what I needed. And then there's moments where you got to – I think, though – it is okay to quit. It I is agree, okay to quit, quit when, some things. you know, you assess it and you're like, this is truly draining yeah, me. Yeah, I'm in my side that, like, I shouldn't be Yeah, kidding. exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I agree. But, but do most it, people are not in positions where right. they need to quit. They need to, like, persevere. Yeah. I would and say. see, the fact that I'm saying it's okay to quit, I'm a person that is like, I'm loyal to the end. Like, I will never quit. Like, I did my four years of school. I can't tell you how many times I wanted to quit. And sure. people encouraged me to quit. Even they were like, Faithful maybe take a break. I'm like, no, nah, we're doing this. We're doing this. And yeah. so, you know, for me to give up on something or not give up, but for me to quit something is pretty big, but sometimes it's necessary. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. I think that's true. And I think sometimes just saying no is necessary. Yeah. I don't want to go. Right. No. Or like, no thanks. Or right. well, here's a great one. I, I sell this to people. I think Brandon Blackman would love this off of one of our episodes about money. <laughs> um, he is so good at saying no and he inspires me. I don't even know if he knows that, but I have learned... <laughs> You don't have to say, no, I'm broke. I don't even say that. I don't want to declare right. death over my life. But you could just say, hey, I'm on a budget. I don't want to do it. Like, right. Or I'm on it's a budget. It's not in the budget right, right now. now. Yeah, it's not in the like budget when, right now. Rich like when budgets. your dear friend invites you on a vacation to Belize and you're like, well, I'm about to buy a car. So, no, it's not in the budget right now. Hey, if this $300 <laughs> was, vacation to Belize. Listen, was, I was happy to be invited. On point. I was happy was nice. to be invited, but was nice. I was, was like, beautiful. I was literally about to buy a car that same month. And I was so. on the verge of, I just need to get away. Oh my gosh, burnout. Just so many different situations. Sorry for kicking you. But <laughs> um, right. yeah, I was like, Belize was what I needed to get away. A week hey, of Belize, yeah. A little I'll island. take it. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> but yeah, I think sleep is great. And then just reprioritizing. Mm-hmm. Hey, do I need to quit this? Hey, do I need to keep going? Yeah, for sure. And, and getting people. Yeah, yeah exactly. Around. Getting a yeah. voice of reason. Like, even when you're making that decision, do I need to quit or stay? Like, don't just make that decision without talking to anyone. Don't talk to just anyone, though. Yeah, no. Talk to somebody you trust. Yeah, but and talk you, to therapy someone. Therapy is, like, the new, like, I don't know. Therapy is the new cool kid thing. Like, I just want to, like, I don't... <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't say that way. But, like, I don't want people to think therapy is bad. Like, if you don't have anyone to talk to... You can always go to a therapist. Absolutely. And they are objective most typically about what you're going through. Yeah. What you need to do if you ask them. Yeah. And so. A therapist or even a mentor, someone older than you. Yeah. Because I think a lot of people who are like 20 want to go talk to people who are 20. It's like, how do you think this person is going to help you if they're the same age as you? They don't. they haven't gone through that. Yeah, exactly. They're in the same boat or like not even because they haven't even experienced what you've experienced. That's real. You know. You can't ask someone who's never plumbed a toilet to like really show you how to do it well the first time. Right. They might end up doing it well. Yeah, sure. But it's rare. Yeah, Yeah. pretty much you're going to need someone in your life who's older, a little more well or more seasoned, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, but, I agree 100%. Yeah. Yeah, so. I love, man, my older mentors, they're just like, oh, it's not a big deal. Exactly. I'm like, oh, <laughs> I'm like just wait it. 10 years, you'll be all right. <laughs> yeah, no, it's so great. Like, yeah. Even dating, they're like, yeah, you like him? Just marry him. Like, they're so <laughs> yeah. simple about it. And I know that's not for everybody, but like, sure. they trust me. Yeah. And so, yeah, just like, ah, oh, you'll be fine. Yeah, just keep going. Ah, yeah. It's take really a break. reassuring to take hear from off. someone who's like lived it. Yeah. And knows, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. So if you're struggling right now, 
and you're going through some burnout, I'm here. Your sister is here for you. I just want to say, you're going to make it. It's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. Just lift your chin a little bit. Compose yourself. Mm -hmm. Just take a moment. Deep breath. (sighs) Let it out. You got this. Don't give up. And on that note, we're going to see y'all next time. We are The Creatives Conversation. If you're on YouTube, subscribe. And if you're on the podcast app, I think you'll probably subscribe there too. So do it. And we'll see you in our next podcast. I don't know what it'll be because we don't even have any kind of... We don't have a plan. (laughs) We're just doing it. We're just here. So love you guys so much and we'll see you later. Bye. Bye.